Whoa, that's bright. How do I turn that up? That was Tom Holland. It was New Year's Day 2021. I'd seen Spider-Man at uh, Homecoming recently and I'd seen some related jazz on YouTube from Tom Holland who plays Spider-Man at the moment, or one of the Spider-Mans anyway, that suggested his Instagram might be a whirly gig of fun. So I looked him up. I quit Instagram before Christmas, which perfectly explains why I was there. And out of idle curiosity, I was like, well, what does someone with 39 million followers post on their stories? Because I don't post anything hardly at all to my stories. And then I said, crikey, because this is a safe for work recording. <laughs> What I actually said was, what is this Tom f***ery? But we'll bleep that out. No pun intended. I got the shock of my life because dude was in bed, shirtless at least. I don't follow any celebrities on Instagram. So I was like, is this a normal occurrence? Is this, is this what we're just, is this what we're posting these days? Now this was all in aid of a good cause. And I don't have a punchline for that, but he had a call to action for everyone to donate to Feed Thy Neighbor via Chris Pratt's recommendation. Now this was interesting to me, and not for the reasons that you might first think. The night Right before I saw a documentary called Celebrity, a 21st Century Story, I think that's what it was called, and it was all about how the internet and social media has changed our definition of celebrity and our economics as a result. So for example, Tom fits the, the classic definition of celebrity because he's a movie star, perhaps you can let me know if he does influence of type endorsements as well, but an influencer by the, the modern definition is sort of anyone who is able to build an audience around their interests or, or just around their personality although I think the number one joke about influencers is that they usually don't have a personality but anyway and if they're able to like build that to a point where that audience then wants to buy anything from that person directly or indirectly whether it's related to whatever the initial sort of niche interest was in the first place and someone on the documentary did actually say that you know the the measure of fame don't mind me i'm just you know breaking things in the background while recording this that the measure of fame these days is how well you can actually shift a product or service movies or otherwise is this is interesting actually because i had a conversation with another blogger before where sort of some other people in the money niche were like yeah no i'm not an influencer like i don't pressure anyone to buy anything like i don't influence anyone but actually you know if you're putting out any form of content blog post podcast maybe you're running an instagram page or something even if you're you're not trying to like sell anything to anyone you are still influencing people but for the purposes of this we'll just stick to like the documentary definition of an influencer as as being like someone who has an audience that they that they earn from that audience but i do, I do just want to make the point as well that if you have a very small audience maybe you don't monetize that following but if you're making like especially for me with a personal finance podcast and channels and blog you know i have to be very careful what i say because i i, I could be influencing someone to make a financial decision and i'm not a financial advisor at the end of the day so i think it's also important to recognize that everyone has a responsibility because you you are influencing other people even if you don't fit like the the modern celebrity definition of an influencer if that makes sense there was this pap in the documentary talking about how he lost like a 20 grand payday the day that things changed basically which is that he'd taken some pictures of the beckhams in like their their swimwear sort of having a private moment on on the beach or by a pool or something and then he tried to sell those photos the next day to a tabloid and they were like well no the photos are worthless because victoria beckham had already posted all of this stuff to her instagram and something that i'd never really Really thought about before or not looked at it this way before that they brought up in this documentary was the idea that celebrities are sort of taking control of their image with social media it gives them like a, an autonomy that you perhaps wouldn't have in like a modern day of of tabloids and paparazzi photos and all that sort of thing so instead of thinking of it as well it's just this sort of you know social media celebrity social media is just this vain world of leaked dodgy tapes and you know showing off your latest Botox, whatever, that this is actually like a world of autonomy and creativity too, because, you know, some influencers and celebrities are really creative about what they're putting out on their social media channels. Tom Holland on New Year's Day, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, wasn't an example so much, but when I was watching a, like the making of Spider-Man on YouTube, YouTube did that thing where it's like, here you go, you would obviously like to watch a short film of Tom Holland playing golf with toilet paper, which turned out to be like this creative thing that he'd done on Instagram, I think. Now the last Spider-Man broke various 
box office record. So I think he's doing probably quite well on the, you know, pushing the product or service front. Perhaps he should start his own line of toilet tissue. And this changes the meaning of selfies too, because again, you we think of selfies as being like this really vain thing to do, right? But uh, Katie Steckley is a YouTuber and podcaster and has like quite a decent Instagram following as well. She kind of made the point that like as a female content creator, she was sort of discouraged from posting selfies because the, the comments you get in return are that you like you're not meant to post a picture of yourself where you're happy with how you look in the picture because you're not actually meant to like yourself. And this just all kind of like rang connecting bells for me because... I, as part of this, I came across an interview where Tom was talking about how he actually likes himself and how that's kind of a, yeah, I think it is a novelty these days for people to not only like themselves and be comfortable with themselves, but also to be like comfortable saying that out loud, because I think the assumption is that someone in his position isn't meant to, isn't meant to sort of say that they're actually confident in their own abilities and that they don't like hate the way they look and all that sort of thing. I, do you know what? I'm quite lucky in the sense that I, I love who I am and I try and be myself and stuff. I, I, what are you laughing at? Aaron's laughing at me. I'm not self-conscious about... What are you laughing at? I don't really know. I just, I love, I like, I love myself, you know, in, in a good way, you know? Not in a way like, oh, I'm so handsome. Right, but right, like, right, I right. Just, I just really enjoy my life. I'm just so happy in my own skin and, and, and I think I'm very lucky to be that way, you know? Um, but uh, but no, I'm loving life. Fans like to know that the that the people that they watch appreciate the thing as much as they do. Yeah. Especially in our world where we know so much more about everything and everyone than than ever before in yeah. history. We're so involved. I think for me, Instagram is the most important thing to like keep control over because it's quite easy for instagram to be a very fake version of your life of course and sometimes it's difficult to like if you go and have professional pictures taken by a photographer it's quite difficult to not post the posy pictures of you looking good but right. i'd like to try and keep my instagram lively and let people know that i'm a bit of an idiot and a goofball and stuff just because i don't want to have an instagram that's just like ooh, look at me right you know? so but that's what something I, sometimes i am guilty of like Damn, I look good today. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, and then fishnets. But what does this all mean for our finances? Because my mind map of an autistic brain was like, from this single Instagram story, was like, there's more to it than this, and not just because he was only filming from the shoulders up. I mean, the first thing is if you were wanting to be really cynical, him posting a story like this is very effective marketing. You know, imagine it was a another celebrity or influencer flogging a product instead so he was doing this for charity but imagine that this was like a commercial thing instead he certainly knows how to get people's attention and we live in an attention economy now you'd know that if you'd stuck this far but lots let, you know let's face it most of us click off of everything within the first eight seconds and on instagram you like most of the time you have like a minute to get your message across right and then stories breaks that up further to make it extra easy for people to go squirrel and get distracted i mean basically he's done what chris evans did when he wanted people to vote in november 2020 whether it was an accident or not if you don't know what happened i won't cover it neither did chris so at least he's using his audience's attention for something very positive you know i mentioned something similar in episode 9 of the podcast regarding harry styles now i have to put money in a swear jar because i'm meant to be on like a harry hiatus i'm all harried out for a while because i'm not cynical though and Tom Holland seems to be mostly made of rainbows and kittens and not cynical either, therefore. I don't know that he actually did this with the intention of being so attention grabbing because he's, well, I mentioned the box office records and his follower count at the start if you missed it. People would probably watch this guy kick a roll of toilet paper around. In fact, they do. True story. <laughs> there's, there's video evidence of that. It's not too hard for him to get people's attention. So what you're getting instead then is what this celebrity documentary referred to which is a window into someone's personal life and this can be leveraged in all kinds of ways and if we're on the receiving end of that we just need to kind of have an awareness about how this is used so this ties in with him playing the current peter parker aka spider-man because you know he's this boy next door from queens next door to someone i i clearly don't live in queens can i get you some food honey yeah let's not do that today it seems the appeal is that he's the best avatar that a young audience has had so far to feel like they could 
actually be an Avenger if the Avengers needed someone who was mostly awkward and then does a backflip now and again. So ironically, Tom giving away his private life quite willingly on his Instagram is like very in tune with the character that he plays at the moment. And he also, he has to be recognisable, right? Like, especially because he, he's wearing a mask most of the time. So it's, it's in an actor's interest to make themselves recognisable when they're not working via social media, especially if they also spend a lot of time on screen with their face covered. So I think Christopher Nolan said of casting Tom Hardy as Bane in Dark Knight Roses that he thought Tom Hardy had a lot of integrity because there were certain actors that actually did not want to play that role because they were like, I'm not going to be in a film and have my face covered the entire time. Like, like why would I want to do that? People won't be able to see who I am. But from Tom Hardy's point of view, it's like, that's absolutely him demonstrating his ability because then he had to do all of the acting with his body and his voice and just his eye movements. And then he basically does the same thing again for the whole of Dunkirk because his face is covered for the whole of Dunkirk pretty much because he's wearing like a, a flight mask anyway. But the press intrusion into celebrity lives generally is, is framed as negative and then people withhold their sympathy because they say, well, but you posted your breakfast on, on Instagram. So, you know, what are you complaining about? The generic Snapchats is what drives me nuts, you know, like I'm eating cereal, like I don't give a <laughs> So there's a GQ interview with Tom Holland where he was disconcerted, I guess is the word, about the fact that he had been photographed by paparazzi and that that was the first time it had ever happened to him and it was really uncomfortable. And yet he's like a really good example of a celebrity who's also kind of sharing quite a lot on social media about their what other people might class as too personal because it's, you know, it's part of their home life and whatever. But if we keep in mind this idea that posting to your social profiles as a celebrity is actually a reclamation of control when fame means you lose control over everything else there's definitely a power there to influence and to influence commercially as well so as a consumer i think it's just training yourself then to be a bit detached in episode 10 of the podcast i talked about fame is very dehumanizing perhaps someone there's always this argument isn't there like well you you can't say that such and such a person is normal anymore because they've got a personal chef and I don't have a personal chef and that's not normal but a person is a person is a person so I'm all for treating everyone with kindness but at the same time it doesn't mean we have to like give all of our savings away to someone we've never met just because they're so down to earth that you both like you know have the same pair of high street trainers donating to a charity is different obviously and I recommend lots of things through the blog and on this podcast and everything but that's not with the idea that anyone consuming this is going to be like well yes I have to buy all of these things it's purely if that thing solves a problem for you within your priorities and I think when you get attached to someone if you're sort of consuming their social media all the time and their social media is this very like homey you know I'm just making some breakfast then you can kind of like fall into this thing where you're sort of buying everything from that person because just because you feel close to them even if it's not even in your priorities anymore and that's where we like run into financial trouble just going back to feed thy neighbor so i did a reverse advent calendar in december the other thing i would take away from this is that the reverse advent calendar is to donate food to food banks in december but just to point out that you know, food banks need help all year round, not just at Christmas. So another point on this is that, you know, instead of buying something that you that you don't need, you could always put like a percentage of that towards donating to a food bank instead. And if you're like, well, I have a spending problem, like why is donating to a food bank gonna help? But it's just more about like evening out your spending so that you can contribute in ways that are helpful to others so i believe that if you give like the universe gives back to you i mean that's literally how the economy works actually so when you do have money and you want to earn more of it you have to spend something and you can't expect everything for free because if, if you don't value anything 
then why should anyone value any services that you provide? But, you know, forgetting about the food banks, if you earn good money, but you overspent in 2020, you know, what were the influences literally? Was it buying things you don't need personally from your favorite creators? Do you even know the answer to that? Do you need to like go back and check? So this is your like opportunity to just take a step back and actually look at what's happening if you don't know where your money is funneling away to. The fourth thing on this is that if you do follow a lot of celebrities and influencers, like I said, I don't follow any on Instagram. I don't really suffer from comparison syndrome with these people, but I understand that that is a big problem for a lot of people. I guess my comparison syndrome would be with my peers or with people doing the same thing as me but who are several years ahead and I have to like keep reminding myself that I I can't like try and you know make the same content as someone who has a team of people helping them and stuff like that it's just me in my onesie me not me in my onesie I mean I could be wearing a onesie it's just me and my onesie it's just me by myself basically (laughs) so either from the YouTube carousel that I took a ride on or from the the GQ interview when I decided to make this even Tom Holland said somewhere that he deletes his Instagram now and again now if you're worried about losing all of your photos you don't have to delete your account you can just uninstall the app for a bit to give yourself a break I think sometimes you don't even realize how what we're looking at and how it makes us feel until we take a moment to, to actually step back and and go without something for a little while and if he suffers from comparison syndrome then what do we do because people are going to his profile i imagine to dream about what's it like to be rich famous and athletic so god knows what he's looking at if he needs to delete his instagram as well you know the flip side of this if you were very shrewd and you wanted to make money in the coming year is that there's a few things here that you could do right in order to make your social media worth paying attention to I think in 2020 there was definitely kind of a pushback against that sort of like lux life style of of imagery that that a lot of people have been relying on up until now and people are looking a lot more for authenticity so if they are gonna buy anything from you if you think that you could be an influencer you probably do need to like lean into you know what is it that you can have a USP but like just be a normal person and just be down to earth possibly with the odd backflip thrown in if that's where your talents lie later the same day i was looking at the infinity saga dvd box set on amazon which is like worth over 300 pounds this wasn't like a pavlovian response so i didn't see tom holland i think i must spend 400 pounds on dvds (laughs) i don't even have a blu-ray player plus i don't know if i want the box set because I like certain Marvel movies more than others and that's not a criticism of the franchise like I actually think it means that they've done their job perfectly because not every single story is exactly for you and if you know what's for you and what isn't then that to me means that the you know the person on the other side has has done what they're meant to do like after this you might not subscribe or like this when it goes up on YouTube even though you've made it this far and that's fine you do you boo. One place I think that Instagram falls down compared to YouTube is that on YouTube there are a lot more ways for creators to get paid. So this is also probably why I would prefer to listen to a podcast or watch a YouTube video than spend time on Instagram in the first place because it's actually a lot easier for me to support my favourite creators that way without necessarily having to like put aside my a monthly budget in order to do so. So for instance, really simple things on YouTube are like you know not skipping the ads i guess the same on a podcast as well like just letting the ads play if there are ads but on youtube um there's also things like there's a few creators like harris heller and roberto blake who have created like royalty free music that you can stream so they still get paid the royalties but you you don't have to pay anything not that i don't think music can't be worth paying for as well obviously i won't mention his name again otherwise i have to put money in the swear jar but there's that that other guy who makes music that people seem to like and i think that has a value but by all means if there are creators who who want to make royalty free music for other creators to use or just for people to enjoy and listen to and it's possible to consume that for free but they still get paid then like why not like that i feel like i i'm happy to take part in that I guess you've got other things as well like Patreon and memberships and those aren't designed with the idea that every single person watching or listening has to contribute to those things. They really just rely on like 
a tiny group of people who want to support that way and can afford to support the creator in that way like if they're paying something per video to get like their name in the end credits and stuff like that i'm all for that stuff because no one's forcing anyone to contribute to that and there's nothing saying that everyone consuming that content has to contribute to that either you know instagram on the other hand there's just a lot more onus on like if someone wants to make a living there they're just very much relying on people you know clicking on an affiliate link in a story or shopping on the app or just trying to get like a sponsorship all the time i don't think being sponsored is bad because again you know not everyone in the audience has to buy a sponsored product just because your favorite person did a, a sponsorship it's there for the people who that thing is in their priorities but I, instagram is also heading further in the shopping and brands direction anyway so if this is an Achilles heel for you I would put up your defenses now because it's only going to go I think it's just going to get kind of noisier and noisier and there'll be like even more pressure to spend whether that's what's right for you right now or not I'm not the only one quitting because of the algorithm changes uh, so it's going to get a lot harder to get people's attention as well unless you're doing stunts uh, or unless you're sort of paying to play or you're promoting something I said I'd record more on entertainment and spending so I guess this is part of that I won't go on a huge tangent about how you can be less of a collector if that's stressing you out although i have lots of not financial advice because i'm not a financial advisor but lots of ideas on on how to be less of a collector if it's if it is stressing you out right now but regards to collecting the marvel movies i mean really that's replicating the behavior in the movies where the characters kind of collect each other it's a funny or perhaps it's a little bit sad that our biggest franchises are all about being an outsider I, I don't know why we all feel like outsiders if we're all you know like billions of people are watching the same movie about feeling like an outsider you all feel the same way <laughs> just talk to each other about it i mean i understand why i feel like an outsider but that's because i'm the fool on the hill from the beatles song before you get any pot shots in you know my brain worrying has me on the outside but i like these stories for the same reason as most people which is you know that they include these found families so it's, it's like a a way to be social without all of the pressure of being social right you know there's a misconception that if you're autistic you're automatically antisocial. I'm i'm very social i just have a funny way of showing it mostly by avoiding social situations and my idea of being social is to talk into a microphone when i can't see you or hear you but found families is a huge theme at the moment in sort of all of the major franchises just to tie this all together so tom's instagram stories where he's you know filming these little short films with the the stunts with the toilet paper and whatever those are also seem to feature like friends of his who are always around and actual family so he's also replicating what you associate with an avengers movie because he, he surrounds himself with this found family as well you know i actually think it's good that entertainment is providing us with that it's one of the reasons that supernatural has just been like the longest running genre show so it's been on tv for 15 years then that was all about found family i mean they did destroy that in their final scene but we won't talk about that today it's also why on youtube you're quite often find like vlog squads so quite a few of the big vloggers it's not actually just their channel they have like sort of a group of people who will keep popping up in their videos and it's all to do with this idea of found families that we like but if you find yourself living vicariously through celebrities online more than you're comfortable with and collecting these stories to the extent that you never find your found family in real life you know it might be time to have some conversations that will give you more support in future so characters are great as surrogates right like peter parker is never going to ghost you or talk back to you or be disappointed when you can't go to his birthday or whatever it is but those characters are they're meant to be there for you when you can't choose your real family and i think you have to resist the urge to bankrupt yourself the rest of the time if you can allow a little more room for real friends in your life and if it's awkward just break the tension with a backflip you'll be fine the tagline for one of my youtube channels is what does this button do because i feel like as an autistic person when you don't have any social intuition really that a lot of situations are just like i'll just press random buttons and see what comes out and you know what it works most of the time and if the response isn't good you just press another button and you solve it so don't be afraid of of testing what does this button do like 
the quicker you can test things in life and have them go wrong, the quicker you learn. As ever, I have a Buffy quote for every situation. I'm bare, by the way. I never introduce myself. Check out any of my earlier stuff or have a wander around both the YouTube channels if you want to know more about where I'm coming from, if that's not already clear. In episode 20 from series 4, one of the quotes is, At this point, a cynical person might think you're offering just what we need when we need it most. And this often comes to mind whenever I see something that's plugged at exactly the right moment. You know, someone comes in with, you know, selling like a product or a service at just the most perfect timing. And you know what? That's, it's not actually a bad thing that it comes to mind and that the timing is perfect. We're afraid of being sold to when we shouldn't be really because there's nothing wrong with being sold to if there's a genuine problem being solved. I think I talked about this in episode 5 of the podcast. If you fear buying anything and you think nothing has value, you're only hurting yourself in the long term. We're afraid of being sold to because we don't trust ourselves, we feel out of control of our spending. But when you decide what your priorities are and you know what it is that you want solving, you can make much better purchase decisions and that fear that you're being sold to, that you're being manipulated in some way goes away. So I recommend you know writing down what you want your financial priorities for the next year to be. And then anytime that you feel like you are being like heavily marketed to, well, it pops into your head. At this point, a cynical person might think you're offering just what we need when we need it most. You'll know, like, do you actually need this thing the most right now? Is this solving an urgent problem for you? I mean, I might want to be Spider-Man, but I can't honestly say that I should buy a Spider-Man costume right now because it's not solving an urgent problem for me. We'll, we'll put that one on the back burner. I think entertainment in particular has immense value. Do support entertainment wherever you can, in whatever way you can. It's one of the things that, that gives us life and definitely for me it's, it's something that helps me process so much. I'm sure for a lot of you it'll be the same as well. I will keep returning to this as a topic. As Peter Parker would say, I don't want to go, but we can always reconvene. He didn't say the second part, I'm just letting you know, I'll be back. But until next time, go forth. What I like about Instagram and what I've learned from Zendaya is that it's really important to make your Instagram an, accru an accurate representation of who you are as a person. Mm -hmm. You see lots of Instagram accounts and you're like, there's no way you're like that in real life. Mm -hmm. Like, this is the fake you that you want people to see. Um, and I feel like I make it like an active decision to try and show people just who I am, not what I want you to think I am. Um, and I just have really enjoyed the last couple of years kind of shaping my social profile to just be an extension of me. And then I can feel like I can connect with my fans on a more personal level rather than this kind of silly hierarchy thing that Instagram often kind of makes. Whoa, that's bright. How do I turn that up? Hey guys, I need you all to do me a favour. I need you to all go to Chris Pratt's Instagram Live and donate to Feed Thy Neighbour. It's a charity that feeds kids all around America. What more worthy a cause could there be? Um, Chris Pratt, you're an absolute saint for helping these people around the world and around your country. Um, I'm really honoured that you asked me to be a part of it. Um, Happy New Year, everyone. I am going to bed. It is just about to turn 3 o'clock in the morning. And I definitely, my parents, I'm staying at my parents' house. So they're going to wake up and be like, shut up, go to bed. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so do me a favour. Go on Chris's Live. Donate to Feed Thy Neighbour. Help feed people around America. It's a really worthy cause. I love you all for it. And Happy New Year. Thank you.